an interesting looking place, isn't it? And it's got an evocative name as well, Cortenflis. It's it is, got to mean is, something. Isn't it? Yes, indeed. It's, it's, it's a little bit repetitive, Mike, yeah. because uh, with the court, that, that yeah. sort of translates itself, doesn't it? Yeah. But there's a sense in which the Henflis is saying exactly the same thing, because Cleis is a court. Right. You know, in modern Welsh we yeah. talk about Clisagoron, yeah. the crown court, but that's not referring to that sort of court. No, so what kind of a court is this? I think what we're looking at here is a, a, a princely court, uh, the, right. the seat of one of the Echelwe, one yeah. of the nobility of the Local region. Local rulers. Yes, yes. Indeed. So what we're actually looking at then is something very, very early, something before the Normans? Indeed, yes. And so. Our pendulum is swinging forward in time. We've gone from the Iron Age up onto Valum, yes. and this is a sort of midpoint between that and the Normans and the Cistercians. Indeed, indeed, the pendulum is swinging, and it's it's it's, it's a fascinating transitional period, isn't it? Right. Uh, and it's interesting too to make the point that the Clisoi, the, the you know the, the seats of this mm. authority, they they don't disappear with the appearance of the Normans. Oh, I, right. I think we've got a, such a, an overly simplistic yeah. view of that. Yeah. Because there simply is a reassertion of uh, Welsh mm. lordship. So people like Morgan and Yorworth and Howell of Yorworth who founded the Abbey at Fantanum, they would have li lived at places like this. Indeed, yeah. And uh, these lords of Caerleon, as they frequently yeah. referred to, are uh, very interesting, very powerful yeah. people. And I was delighted to see that the uh, Ancient Qumran Society, uh, A, has produced a cracking book, but B, has dealt with this very, this very story. Yeah, it, went, it was a, it's a fascinating little story. There's lots of blood and gore in there as well, which always captures people's interest. <laughs> you know? I, they weren't always Mr. Nice Guy, were they? No, I no. Mean, there's this they pop. lived in bloody times. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in, in the book, you actually quote one of the chronicles, how Yorworth and Howell um, blazed out against the king and the Normans and according to the chronicles, they were, they, were, they were slaying and burning and plundering without mercy. They were seizing castles throughout Gwent and laid siege to Caleon Castle and retook it. So they were pretty efficient fighting force. There was a lot of to and fro in them with yeah. Caleon, but um, generally it stayed within yeah. uh, Welsh hands yeah. Yeah. Uh, right through the Norman period. And, and that's important too, because Morgan, for example, who was the first of these mm. uh, lords in that sequence, uh, by the end of his life, he's actually signing himself Morgano Regi, uh, Morgan the King, and in doing that, reasserting the title that his grandfather had held, the King of Gwent. Right. And of course, Howell, who in a sense represents the, the other end of that, that chain, uh, he was well into the pillaging and slaying bit, Yes. But he was also, as you say, the founder of Clantana yes. Abbey, which is quite central to yes. our, our themes yes. today. I mean, you wonder whether he founded Clantana Abbey in penance for some of the nasty things that he did. He may well have done. I because think that's frequently the reason for really, his foundations, yeah. isn't I mean, it? He did do some really very nasty he, things, didn't he? He did. Um, really, he's the first lord of Caleon. Yeah. He's been yeah. knighted by the king and, yeah. and becomes a lord. Uh, but he... Uh, he did castrate his uncle and poke his eyes out and throw him in a tower. Um, uh, apparently, the, he must have seen him as a rival. Yeah, yeah. And uh, according to um, some sources, that he, he might be paying penance for that to the yeah. local people. Yeah. His uncle could have been quite popular amongst yeah. the locals. Yeah. And then uh, uh, creating the Cistercian Abbey, yes. well, uh, that is yes. a serious oh, yeah. bonus for the locals. Right with God. Yeah. But this court yeah. uh, is in a fascinating location with respect to the Cistercians themselves, because right. we're right on a sort of a boundary, aren't we? Yes. Um, the road is almost a frontier. I mean, this side of the road, we're actually, even in different lordship, we're in the lordship of Gwynfluk, what mm. becomes the lordship of Newport, and it looks to Baselick and to the west. On the other side of the road, you've got the land that was given to the Cistercians. So we're right on the edge of things here. 